This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about chemical equilibrium. In today's video, we'll talk about Le Chatelier's principle. This is going to be the last video on this chapter, so please refer to the previous videos for the topic of interest. Now, Le Chatelier's principle states that when a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system will readjust to minimize the stress applied. Now, the type of stresses that we can apply on the equilibrium could vary from concentration to volume to pressure to temperature. We are going to discuss all these changes in this video. So first, we will start with the effect of a change in concentration. So consider the following example, where we have the value of k is equal to 5.96 times 10 to the power minus 2, and also we have the equilibrium concentrations at the position number 1, which is before the stress. Now, what would happen if one molar of N2 gas is added to the system? So which means we will change the concentration of N2. So the new concentrations of the uh, components would be nitrogen is going to be equal to 1.399 molar. For hydrogen, it's not going to change, so 1.97 molar. And for NH3, also is not going to, be, to change, so it's equal to 0 0.202 molar. So now these, these are going to be the new concentrations or new initial concentrations. So we can use these initial concentrations to find Q, which is the reaction quotient. Now Q would be equal to 1.70 times 10 to the power minus 2, which is smaller than K, and therefore the system must shift to the right side. So how can we represent this on a concentration profile? So the equilibrium position number one concentrations are listed on the graph so when we add one mole of nitrogen gas to the system the system will readjust to reach equilibrium again by decreasing the concentration of n2 decreasing the concentration of h2 and increasing the concentration of nh3 again notice that the stoichiometry is respected where you can see that when x mole of n2 reacts 3x of H2 will react and 2x of NH3 will be produced. Now let's discuss the effect of a change in pressure of a system at equilibrium. There are three ways that we can change the pressure of a system at equilibrium. The first one is adding or removing a reaction component, whether a reactant or product. Now this one can be treated the same way as changing the concentration. So if we add a product, the system will shift to the left to minimize the amount of product added. Or if you add a reactant, the system will shift to the right to minimize the amount of the reactant added. Or we can increase the pressure of the system by adding an inert gas. Now in this case, the system or the equilibrium will not be affected because the concentrations or the pressure is constant and also the rate of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction will not be affected by adding an inert gas. However, if we change the volume of the container, the equilibrium will be affected. Let's further discuss this and take a look on the following example. So here we have a container that has four particles of N2, eight particles of H2, and two particles of NH3. If we decrease the volume of the container, now the pressure will increase. So the system will readjust itself by decreasing the pressure. Now, how can we decrease the pressure? Looking at the reactant side, we can see that we have four particles. We have one particle of N2 and three particles of H2. And this is taken from the coefficients of the balanced equation. Now, looking at the product side, we can see that we only have two particles of NH3. So in this case, for the system to reduce the pressure to the maximum, it will shift to the side where it can produce less particles, which is the right side. So in this case, the equilibrium will shift to the right. That's why now, after reaching equilibrium again, we can see that we have four particles of NH3, two particles of N2, and two particles of H2. So let's discuss this over pressure profile where the uh, partial pressures at equilibrium position number one are listed on the graph. So now when we decrease the volume, the partial pressures of the reaction components will increase. Now the system will readjust itself by decreasing the pressure 
by shifting to the right side and therefore as you can see the pressure of NH3 will increase the pressure of H2 and N2 will decrease again here this documentary is respected because we can see that when one atmosphere of N2 is consumed three atmospheres of H2 are consumed to produce two atmosphere of NH3 so however this is not always the case now let's discuss the following example of the reaction between I2 and Cl2 to give 2 ICL in this reaction we can see that we have two particles to the reactant side and two particles to the product side if we decrease the volume of the container the partial pressure of the components will increase however the equilibrium will not be affected and therefore the new equilibrium pressure will be the new calculated pressures after changing the volume now let's discuss the effect of change in temperature. Now, we have to note that change in the concentration of reactants or products will change the equilibrium but will not change the equilibrium constant value. In a similar way, changing the pressure will change the equilibrium but will not change the equilibrium constant value. However, change in the temperature will change the equilibrium and also will change the equilibrium constant value. So let's consider the following examples. Let's first discuss the exothermic reactions where the heat is considered as one of the products. So if we add heat, the equilibrium will shift to the left side because heat is considered one of the products. And of course, the equilibrium constant will change. Now in the case of endothermic reaction, heat is considered as one of the reactants. So if we add heat to the system, the system will shift to the right side. And of course, in this case, K will also change. I hope this video is helpful to you. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.